Hello, I'm Mike Nettleship from the website www.mikeswildlifegarden.co.uk. If you're interested in wildlife and you want to know how to attract it to your garden, go to the website and you'll see lots of pictures and videos and information on how to go about it. One of the great ways of attracting birds to your garden is to put up nesting sites. And here I've got a nest box which I made earlier. And on this video I'm going to show you how to make this box. If at the end of it you think it's a bit too much trouble, you can go to the site and order one and I'll make one for you. They're not mass produced, they're not perfect, uh, but the birds don't seem to mind at all. Um, so let's get on with the job of making it, shall we? So we're going to need a piece of 6 inch by 1 inch, that's 150 millimetres by 25 millimetres, and 1.3 metres long, that's about 50 inches. I'm just going to cut the first two pieces first. I'm not going to cut it all up first because that can be a little mistake. Um, because if you cut it all up first and you cut the sides slightly too big, then it's just so difficult to cut just a little piece off. It's a lot better to cut it as you're going along. So I'm going to cut first of all the back because that doesn't matter about the back, whether it's a half an inch out. Um, and that is 14 inches, so I'll mark 14 inches on here. And then I'm also going to cut, at the same time, I'm going to cut the sides. Um, I'm going to cut one piece for both sides, because this bird box is going to have a sloping roof, so it's going to have two sides, and the top of each one is going to be sloping. Um, and so to cut them diff individually it's a little bit awkward I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later on but for the time being I'm just going to cut one piece which is big enough for both sides and so I've made the mark for the length of the back and I'll put a line across there with the square square and now for the both sides what you have to do is you have to add the height at the back to the height at the front. Let me just show you. This is one I made earlier. There's the side, it's got to have a sloping roof. So you've got to have that side, which is nine inches, and that side, the front, is seven inches. So you add the two together, that's nine inch and seven inch, 16 inches, and that's how big, that's how big I'm going to cut this piece. So we've got one mark for 14 inches, now I'm going to mark one for 16 inches. Draw a line across again with the square. And now we'll cut these two pieces. This is how you cut the two sides out of the one piece that I cut from the plank. The piece I cut was 16 inches long, and that's because here we have the two sides which I've already cut. There's one, there's the other. <clears throat> that's the back of the bird box, this is the front. That back is 9 inches, and this front is 7 inches. So that makes the 16 inches that we cut the plank. So now we've got a piece 16 inches, we're going to put, cut it into two. We measure 9 inches down there, front side, 9 inches down the back side, put a mark there and a mark here, and then draw a line across between the two marks. That gives you the diagonal line. And when you cut that, you end up with two pieces with a sloping top. When you put them together the opposite way, you've got two exactly the same, which we use for the sides. So now we've got all the sides all cut and back the top, bottom, ends, everything. But it's a little bit rough on the edges here where I've uh, sewn it. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to run a file down it. Just to smooth the edges off. Get rid of any little bits of wood that are sticking up. See what I mean on that piece just there? Can you see that on the edge? Bits of wood sticking up. So we'll do that to all the pieces of wood and then we're sort of ready to start drilling holes. Now I've cleaned all the rough edges up. 
and put the pieces together and it's beginning to look a bit like a bird box now. Now we've got to drill the holes to screw it together. Now if you wanted to you could just nail it together, um, in which case you would use galvanised clout nails long enough to go through the inch and then into the wood itself. Um, it's easier, you just need a hammer and some nails, uh, but once, this, once you've nailed it together it's kind of uh, done then. I prefer to screw everything so that if I wanted to take it apart for any reason I can do it quite easily. So what I'm going to do is screw it in various places to hold it all together. I'm going to put two screws in each one. So I'm going to put two in the bottom of that to hold it to this side there, two in the bottom of that to hold it to this side and then I'm going to put two holes in the back going through through the back into the side, one there, one there, the same at this side and um, then the front piece has got to go in so I've got to screw through here so I can screw the front piece in. So I'll drill a few holes and then we'll start to put it together. Right, I've marked all the holes or most of the holes uh, as you can see here this is the bottom and I put the holes just about half the way through the thickness of the wood so that when the screws go through the holes they're going to be just about halfway into the wood as you can see. So I'll drill a few holes now. I'm using my bench drill here but uh, of course you can just drill them with an ordinary drill, hand drill. This is just a bit easier because I've got one I'm actually I've drilled all the holes for the screws now but there's one more hole that I've got to drill and that's the entrance hole to the nest box which is which goes either in the front or at the side. Um, I've chosen to put it in the front so I've marked it up and I'm going to attempt to uh, drill through here uh, using a hole cutter so that I'm going to be drilling a hole that is an inch in diameter or very near that's 25 millimeters and this is so that only small birds can get in like blue tits or coal tits. Well I think we more or less uh, burnt our way through there but uh, <laughs> there we are, a nice neat hole now for uh, little blue tits to get in. Right there we are that's drilled, just giving it a little uh, file around the edges to make sure it's nice and smooth to damage the birds as we're trying to get in and out and there we are, tiny hole but the blue tits will be able to get in and out of there okay, maybe a bit of a squeeze but um, they can do it believe me. Now four holes that I drilled which I haven't mentioned up to now which are really important and they are in the bottom of the box you have to drill some drainage holes because it's quite possible that uh, rain will get inside somehow and if there's nothing, nowhere for the water to go once it's inside the box then it's just going to build up inside and flood and kill the chicks. So make sure that you put the four drainage holes in the bottom and make sure they're sort of uh, fair size holes so that they can't be clogged up by any little bits of uh, grass that are put into the nest. So now we've done that, um, we'll start to assemble it. Right, there we are. That's drilled. Just giving it a little uh, file around the edges to make sure it's nice and smooth. To damage the birds as we're trying to get in and out. And there we are. Tiny hole, but the blue tits will be able to get in and out of there okay. Maybe a bit of a squeeze, but um, 
they can do it, believe me. Now, four holes that I drilled, which I haven't mentioned up to now, which are really important, and they are in the bottom of the box. You have to drill some drainage holes because it's quite possible that uh, rain will get inside somehow, and if there's nothing, nowhere for the water to go once it's inside the box, then it's just going to build up inside and flood and kill the chicks. So make sure that you put the four drainage holes in the bottom and make sure they're sort of a fair size holes so that they can't be clogged up by any little bits of uh, grass that are put into the nest. So now we've done that, um, we'll start to assemble it. Um, so let's see, got the two sides. And we'll put it together. Incidentally, I think I've already used, uh, mentioned that if you're using uh, nails, you must use galvanised na galvanised clout nails. Well, similarly, um, if you're using screws, make sure that they're zinc coated, so they're waterproof to an extent. Um, well, for for give them a, a lot longer life. It can make the difference between your bird box falling apart because the screws have rusted in a a year or two, to the bird box lasting for several years. And you certainly don't want it falling apart when it's got chicks inside. Doesn't have to be precision engineering this, but I like to try and get it as near as possible. A little bit out there, but like I say. I'm sure the birds won't mind if it's just not perfect. You see, if it's not quite perfect and you've screwed it, you can just loosen a screw and it gives you a little bit of leeway to just move things about a little bit. Whereas if you've nailed it, then you'd have real problems. Okay, that's starting to look a bit like. I've drilled um, three holes in the top of this and two in the bottom because it really needs three to keep it stable to, to form a triangle. So uh, you could put two in the brick wall, through there into a brick wall, and one into the tree 
or two into the tree, two into the brick wall, just gives a little bit of a different option. Now it would help very much if I drilled a hole there and there and there and there so that I could screw the front to the back. <laughs> so excuse me a minute while I go and do the job properly. And this time we've got all the holes drilled. So uh, take two. So, there we have an almost finished bird box. There are the holes screwed into the tree and you'll be able to get to those when the lid is lifted. But uh, when the lid's down, then they're covered up. So that's fine. So now we've got to uh, sort the lid out. There are only a couple more things to do now and then we've got ourselves a nice new bird box. We've uh, assembled it all and we've got a lid here to put on. Now we want to make it so that we can get in and out of the box um, if we need to. And that's not just so that you can annoy the birds while they're nesting to see what's going on inside the nest box. Although maybe once or twice you can do that if you make sure that there are no birds in. So it needs to be uh, removable. So there's a couple more things to do. That is put a hinge on the top and then put a little latch here so that um, it won't come, come up in the wind. Now for the hinge, um, I always use something that's waterproof and this is, this is what I use. It's a damp proof course for brick laying. Cut a length that's just longer than the bird box itself. You can see that. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it on the top, over the top, nail it to the top with small clout nails, about half an inch. Uh, there we are, there's a clout nail. And it's galvanised, once again galvanised because you don't want them rusting away. Or if these rust away and the plastic comes off, the li the little fly away. So, I'm going to nail it into the top, so the top's covered. Bring it down, nail it into the back, nail it into the top, and then that'll act as a hinge. So I'm going to have to put this on the floor to do it, so I'll show you when it's done. So here's the top all nailed on. I've got plastic, nailed it down the top, nailed it on the front, just there and along the top. Then I just nicked the edge with a Stanley knife, just cut it on the corner, bent it down, a couple of nails there, similarly on the side. So now that's, that's a, a waterproof hinge, no water can get down inside the back there to go into the bird box. 
and the top flips up nicely. I've been making these for years, and they last for years, no problems at all. So we've got a nice new bird box, drainage holes in the bottom. Top drops down. I've put a little mod con in, uh, put a little perch on there. They seem to like perches just outside the hole because you'll often see them sitting on them. Um, there's somewhere for the chicks to get onto when they first come out of the nest as well. And all, all that was necessary after that was to put a hole in the top, drop a screw down into it. Well, before you do that, actually, there are the three holes to screw it in, to screw it to the wall or a tree. So you'd fit it up there, pop the top down. it down nice and firm so nothing's going to get it up solid and there we have our new bird box so now you know how to make your own bird box but if you don't fancy doing it yourself you can order one from the website www.mikeswildlifegarden.co.uk and I'll make them especially for you and post it to you but only if you live in the UK um, if you go to the website you'll see lots of videos and pictures that I've taken around my garden and some elsewhere and tips on wildlife gardening. So that's all for today but I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.